Hello to Miss Nelson and all of her potters. Uh, I know that you guys watched the uh, video on how to build a little extruder out of PVC, and so I, I wanted to give you some more detail. I went out and took some pictures of this, uh, and I'll explain how I actually built that. So the first step you're going to have here is actually assembling and mounting the body of the extruder. The body is actually quite simple. It's just a piece of 3-inch diameter PVC, just a good old white PVC, and uh, it's mounted against this, uh, this board. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is show you the parts here. First of all, you'll notice that there's the PVC, and here's the mounting board. That mounting board is a, a piece of 2x3 uh, wood. It's, you could use a 2x4, I suspect. I just had a 2x3 on hand, so I used that. Notice if you will, that's a little bit shorter than the body of the extruder. Uh, you'll also notice that the extruder is held to this with these, uh, with these hose clamps. Again, I bought those at a hardware store here. All right, so first of all, uh, you notice we've got a couple things. You've got a band on the top of the extruder here, one in the middle, and then you've got a, a thing called a flange at the bottom. Let's talk about these bands right here. I wasn't sure how well the PVC would hold up to the pressure, but I think it holds up fairly well, so you could actually skip probably this step if you want to, but let me show you how to do this in case you want to. Those two bands are actually our one single piece of PVC, and that, that's called a coupling. Uh, here's what it looks from the side, and here's a view that shows you the inside. What this is designed for is to put together two pieces of PVC. The first piece comes in the top and butts up against that little ledge, and the other piece comes in the bottom and butts up against the other side of the ledge. Now what I did was just to make a supported band was I took my Dremel, and, and you could use a hacksaw I guess if you wanted to, a little bit more work, and I, I literally cut along this, I cut that ridge out and cut the whole thing in half. So I cut all the way around once and then cut around again to get rid of that ridge. Then what I did was I took, uh, I would force this, this onto the PVC. Now it's a pretty tight fit, so use a piece of wood and you can put it right on the edge of the PVC and use a hammer and hit the wood so you're not hitting the PVC. And you can move this band down about halfway. Once you get it close to where you want it, take some PVC glue and make sure you buy the right kind of PVC glue. Make, make sure you buy the kind that matches the PVC pipe or it won't work. And so put a little, bit, little bit of PVC glue below it and then push it down on top of the glue. Same thing on the top. And on the top, it's just flush with the, uh, with the top of the, uh, of the like, what am I trying to say? It's flush with the top of the extruder body. All right? So uh, then the next thing you're going to see here is that there's, we want to look at this piece on the bottom. This is actually called a closet flange, as in water closet, which means toilet. So this is a, this is a level fit closet flange, uh, three inch. Of course, if you're going to go with a four inch extruder, go ahead and, and use that one. Here's what the thing looks like, a little out of focus, but you get the idea. And uh, it's, it's, what I wanted was this piece that sticks out right here to mount a piece of wood on. So the, the body of the extruder goes in this little flange right here. And again, I used PVC glue and, uh, and glued that in place. Here's a, a view from the bottom of the flange. Uh, and then here you can see the flange actually in place. So there's the flange uh, from here to there. I also took a picture of the, from way under the extruder looking straight up, which is kind of a weird picture. And uh, what you'll see is that there's a piece of, of plywood here that goes right on top of that. Now, when I first, I, I mounted my extruder before I really put the plywood on, I, I would have done it differently. So what you want to do is this. You want to actually, uh, this plywood is just big enough to, to, cut, to be the size of the flange. I think mine was 7 inches by 7 inches. Uh, I wouldn't leave a slot in it. I would just make a, a hole in the middle of that plywood, slip it over the top of this so it, so it goes right over the flange right there. And, um, and then it, it'll be pretty secure. And you can see here that I've used some, some good old drywall screws to screw that flange to that piece of plywood. And uh, be sure and, and cut off the, uh, the screw tips here so you don't scratch yourself. Uh, that can, those are pretty sharp and that can be kind of dangerous. All right, so, so now that you've got the, uh, now that you, you basically built the extruder, the body of the extruder, you've got your PVC, your, uh, you've got your coupler, which has been cut in half, and you've got your flange. Now you're going to mount it. So to mount this, uh, what you'll do is you're going to first of all mount this little piece of wood right here to this post and you need to think about where you're going to uh, mount your extruder uh, because you've got to have something that you can that you can bolt it to so here's the back side of this and you see that I've got three carriage bolts these are quarter inch carriage bolts uh, and I used to uh, use a, a nut and a washer now I was using carriage bolts I had on hand so they're a little bit longer than I needed and I used a Dremel tool to cut them off go ahead and do some measuring and get just the size you need uh, to do this but, but you can see the way that you do this is you actually go ahead and mount the board with the carriage bolts, but keep it really loose. Uh, so there's a gap right here. Uh, it means you're going to need a little bit longer carriage bolt. And then you thread those hose clamps behind that board and wrap them around the body of the extruder, and then you tighten them down. 
So before you tighten the board to the post, you'll actually have the extruder tighten to the board. Then go ahead and crank that thing down, the nuts here, and, uh, and pull that board right up against the extruder. So once again, what you're doing is you're mounting the, the uh, extruder to the board and then the board to the post. But of course, the heads of the bolts are right here, so you've got to you've got to do that first. Uh, it should be clear as mud. Just let me know if you need some more some details. All right. So the next part was actually the plunger, the thing that's gonna that's gonna push the clay through your extruder. So it's got two parts. It's got a piece of two inch PVC which fits inside the three inch, and you can see from this that it's about 18 inches long. Um, I've also got a box beam. This is a hollow uh, square beam of steel. It's got holes drilled in it. Just go over to the metal part of the of the hardware store, and you you should be able to find this. And this was 36 inches long. You want it uh, fairly long so that you can have some good leverage here. So um, just to show you some detail here, what I did was I I cut a slot through the uh, through the plunger here, so I can insert my the handle. And you can see that this slot is about four inches long. Leave this intact up here at the top for a little extra support. And then to attach the handle to the plunger, and you can see where the first time I didn't like it, so I moved it down a little bit. And by the way, you're going to have to monkey with this a bit and, and adjust it so it works. Uh, I just use a bolt, a carriage bolt and a wing nut here to attach that. Now, the business end of this plunger is the important part. And so what you want is this thing. It's called a gripper. It's made by this company, Odie, right here. And it's made to actually go down into a piece of PVC, and you turn that big wing nut on the top, and it expands, and it seals that off. Well, what you'll notice is I took a Dremel tool and I cut that edge off right there. So here's mine, a little dirty. But you see how this has got that edge with the words on it? Notice the words are gone. And you cut it short enough that the, that the, the rubber gasket there shows. Um, and, and this comes completely apart, so you don't have to cut it with the gasket on it. You, otherwise, you'll, you'll damage the gasket there, which you, which you don't want to do. All right, so, so cut that off, and you want that rubber part to stick out. And I think this is explained pretty well in the video. Mounting this is pretty simple, and this is, it actually be mounted inside, but you can see how the mounting comes. So what I've got is three pieces here. I've got my, my gripper here, or my plunger stopper. I've got a connector, and then I've got an eye bolt. Um, and all I did was take this guy into the hardware store, over to the hardware section, and I found this little connector. And you have to get a connector that actually has threads that match the threads on top of the, uh, on top of the stopper here and then find the eye bolt that matches that. And that's how we get, you put it all together and you get that. So you've got your eye bolt and your connector, which is now screwed down on the screw that's already on the gripper there. All right, so then the next thing you have to do is quite simple. You just, you stick that thing inside, and I've got it outside, stick that thing inside, push your bolt through, and then uh, put a nut on it. And again, you, you don't want this, this uh, the nut on the other side of this to stick out because it will bind so if you've got some way to cut that nut off, uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and do this. So the last thing, and this was actually for me the most difficult part, uh, was the leverage points for the extruder because I did not use the right kind of hardware at first and I was tearing it all to pieces. It turns out a lot of stuff that you buy in the hardware store is very soft steel. But a friend of mine told me about a type of bolt. It's called a grade 8 bolt. And they're expensive, but they are, they are the hardest steel that's actually made. You can look these up on uh, Google if you want. And you can see that I've used one, two, three, four, five of these. And basically what I did here was I simply drilled a hole all the way through this post. You can see my grade A bolt there. And, and the ends of these stick out. And those are the little leverage points that you use for your box beam. And again, I think that showed uh, that shows up pretty well in the video here. Well, I want to wish you guys all the luck in building this. I'm kind of excited. Uh, let me know how it goes. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and just send me some more email. And good luck to you guys. And uh, get dirty.